Hello and welcome to episode 85 of my Working with Todoist series. In this episode, I want to show you all about or tell you all about the new smart scheduling or scheduling function that has just been launched in all versions of Todoist. So it doesn't matter whether you're using the web version, the desktop version, or even the mobile version. In all cases, the uh, this new feature works on everything. And basically what it's doing is it's, it's using machine learning to see how you are organizing your week and your tasks. Now, the thing that I'm a little bit interested about is how is it going to know how busy my days are when it doesn't actually have access to my calendar so uh, that's something that will be worth watching over the next few weeks as this feature is going to learn is learning about my uh, working week so basically what it's doing is it's watching uh, your habits so it's if you usually catch up on your emails on Monday morning um, or if you're reading on a Saturday it will very quickly learn that uh, task urgency, of course, this is going to be based on uh, probably your flags and other data that it's collecting anonymously. I must point out that it is collecting the data anonymously. It's not collecting your data and holding it anywhere. It's just randomizing it. Uh, of course, it's going to understand work days versus weekends and upcoming tasks. So if you've got a task heavy day on, in my case, it would be a Thursday. Uh, then it would know that and it would not schedule a task for a Thursday. And of course, your daily and weekly goals will come into this uh, algorithm I'm assuming they're using. So as I mentioned, it's available on your all your mobile devices, your iOS, your Android, and it's available also on your desktop and web versions. So let's go into my desktop version. And if you remember from my episode 76, when I went through my next, why I use a next actions label, uh, these are for basically for those of you who haven't seen that episode. This one is my label for tasks that have to be done at some point but are not actually time specific, so they don't have a date. I limit this to a maximum of 10 because I don't want it to become overwhelming. And at the moment, I have nine, so I'm keeping up with my thing. Now, two ways of using this smart scheduling. First of all, I can click on the actual task and I can click on schedule, and it's going to go little bit here and I can just click on that now it'll actually tell me which day it's going to schedule this uh, so I can decide whether to manually do it or not so in this case it suggested a date for Tuesday so if I click on that it's going to give me Tuesday as the date however you can actually do this uh, as a mass or multiple items so again if you remember how to collect so you click on the shift key and click on there and to select them all just click down the shift key and then click down there uh, down on this one so now I've selected all of these if you go up to schedule um, you'll see that I've now got smart schedule here so if I click on that it's gonna say um, <laughs> well actually it's saying try it so I'm gonna try it so now it's gonna give me suggested dates for all of these um, and it's actually lo a lovely way of actually dropping these down so it's, it's giving me the option to look at this and I can actually remove the task from the smart scheduling if I think no I'm not gonna be able to do that on Tuesday now one of the interesting things I've noticed here is that it knows already that I am busy on Thursday and it hasn't actually scheduled anything for Thursday now one I can see a huge use for this on a on my next actions label and when I'm doing my week review on a Sunday I could actually do this I could set up the smart schedule and bang I can just go go for it um, so there is quite a bit that you can do in here, uh, but I really like the way that it's giving me the option, if I wish, just to remove this. So for example, click, I know on Tuesday, I'm not gonna be near a department store, so I can remove it there, sorry, today. And actually, I know I'm not gonna be buying black shoelaces today, so I can remove that. Um, and I can just click on update. And now it's just giving me the days that this, and it's actually nicely, <laughs> I do like the fact that it's actually nicely organize that for me so that's a really really cool way so it's giving me the next seven days i can go into my next actions and i can see uh here like this one has now been removed and uh so has the black shoelaces so that's those two dates are not in but everything else has now been scheduled for a day that's a really really cool way of doing it 
Of course, as I mentioned, you can do this on your mobile devices just as easily. Um, you've got everything here, res rescheduling overdue tasks. So if you have an overdue task, you can just go bang and it will give you the suggested dates as it's showing in here. Let me just zoom in there for you. So it's a really, really wonderful way of letting Todoist do a lot of the hard work for you. Now, I would imagine if it's, as it is machine learning, you're going to need to actually give it some time to actually um, catch up <clears throat> and learn more about your uh, system, of course. And so don't expect this to be giving you the, the miraculous answers immediately. Give it some time, give it a week or two to start learning what you, how you organize your tasks. This can only get better over time. So that's the new rescheduling or smart rescheduling or smart scheduling um, feature in Todoist. I really, really like this and I'm having a lot of fun playing with it. As I say, I have a lot of uses for this in my next actions folder because sometimes I find myself not even looking at it because I think I'm going to have a busy week. And one of the best ways to reduce your next actions folder is to use this smart scheduling feature. And as I say, you can change these at any time that you want. You can go in and change them. And when you do, if you're doing a, a mini daily review, uh, let me think about that, a daily mini review, then you'll be able to just readjust things as and when or how you want to do it. So there you go. That's Todoist Smart Scheduling. Uh, I think it's going to be a really, really useful feature. I've had so much fun playing with it. It has surprised me at how good it really is, particularly as it's not obviously looking at my calendar. Um, maybe that's going to be a, a future ability for this. I, I don't know. But uh, for things for now, this is a very, very smart feature. And I'm quite excited about how this is going to grow and how it's going to develop in the future. So there you go. Hopefully you found this episode useful uh, and I hope you're going to get a lot out of this smart scheduling. And now it just w leaves me to wish you a very, very productive week and I'll see you in the next episode.